Hello, I'm John Sargent, back with another video chat. When there was a bit more optimism, a week or so ago, when we were still told masks didn't have to be worn in museums, my wife Mary and I went to see the marvellous Titian exhibition at the National Gallery. For the first time in at least four months, we travelled by tube. To make the trip even more memorable, we had an extremely expensive lunch at a fancy restaurant. As a young journalist on expenses, I learned how to justify this sort of outlay. It was entirely consistent with important background research. Yes, we did it for you. How could I possibly give you an accurate picture of my semi-lockdown life without a fact-finding trip of this sort? In the words often used by those facing trial in the criminal courts, I didn't know what else to do. From start to finish, it was rather an eerie experience. The tube was almost empty, even though it was the middle of the day. People watching was less fun because we all wore masks, and the only tremor of excitement came from someone who had the slightest hint of a cough. As we sped up the escalator at Leicester Square Station, the gallery of theatre posters was oddly disconcerting. They advertised shows that had died months ago. Oh dear! Let's go quickly on to our dining experience. A table outside? Why not? But first, I'm getting used to this, a temperature check. We both passed. Nothing could dampen my mood now. A glass of chilled white Côte du Rhône, please. A seafood platter? Let's be posh. A fruit de mer with half a lobster. And... I don't want to be stingy, a bottle of that Rhone wine. All those months of lockdown were at last beginning to make sense. It was only a short walk to the National Gallery. We rounded the corner of the splendid church of St Martin in the Fields, and there before us, Trafalgar Square. But not as I've known it before. A barefoot young woman was belting out a pop song on a ropey sound system. She only had a handful of coins in her tray, not even as many as the small number of passers-by. The almost empty square was like the set for a science fiction film. The Martians have landed. In one corner, on the fourth plinth, was the latest example of performance art, a great white blob looking like an ice cream. Apparently it's meant to give off an air of uncertainty and is a message for our times. I would have preferred a real ice cream. My mind went back to when, as a country child, I first saw Trafalgar Square. It was so exciting to come out of the old tube station and race up into this great space surrounded by blackened buildings. With my brother and sister, we chased the flocks of pigeons. Having bought small bags of seeds for a penny each, we were pictured with the birds all over us. Not long after, at home in Oxfordshire, we would again see the square in a colour film of the coronation. Time for a good dose of the Italian Renaissance. Several weeks before, I had obtained tickets for this widely praised Titian exhibition, reopening after being kept in storage during the lockdown. As we arrived before our set time, 2.30, we were told to wait alongside the outside wall. After our glamorous lunch, it was a bit of a letdown. Social distancing, however sensible, can be tedious. But the expectation of high art and culture, and I have to admit, a degree of self-congratulation for making these arrangements, made it easily bearable. Peer pressure at art exhibitions I've found in the past can be quite disturbing. All those earnest, brilliant people with their casual but expensive clothes exuding effortless superiority. But this time, hobbled by their masks and seemingly bowled over by their newly found freedom, there was, I wouldn't normally be so effusive, a real spirit of joy. We'd come together not in fear or anxiety, not as a way to confront the virus, but simply to contemplate genius. 
I had completely forgotten about those Martians. I didn't know a great deal about Titian before, but Mary and I had done our homework. As a former classics teacher, she knows the Greek myths on which the seven paintings in the exhibition are based. She quietly read to me the brief descriptions of the stories which she had prepared at home. It was like being in the Uffizi Gallery in Florence. We had been taken out of ourselves, as on the best kind of break, and I now readily confess it had no connection whatsoever with background research. This was close to being a perfect day. Until next time, cheerio.